everyone and welcome back to a new video in our series on modeling analysis and design of reinforced concrete structures and in today's video we're gonna be basically modeling our our bridge so I'm expecting a shorter video for this week uh, because I don't want to start talking about live loads and live production and whatnot I have a very big to-do list and I'll be talking about the to-do lists at the end of the video so enjoy this short video and with that being said sit back relax and enjoy the show Okay, so before I start, I think it makes sense to group our structures because of ease of selection. I might need this grouping later too. So what I will be doing is I will try to select my elements in a certain smart way. So I click on front like this and select everything from here to here, trying not to touch the columns of the bridge. And I think I've done it. So I think I selected my selection correctly. Yes, I did. And I want to group this, so I will go to my groups and basically right click here and create a group out of the selection. So if I click on that, there we go. He calls it new group members, what a bummer. Let me just double click, tick tick. I mean, he is using this. He gives me a list of members, let me just try that, let me just click on this. So he defines new group members, panels and nodes, but did he do that? Let me just try very quickly. Group, that's my new group members, double click, or just let me just add it and okay he's doing it correctly fine it's kind of a it's kind of a lame name so i think i should rename it and call it um right tower members also this should be right tower panels and here right tower nodes yeah i think i'm doing okay if i want i could add a folder and add those groups by saying right tower and adding those two, no, two groups here. So now I have my groups in a folder called right tower. I don't know, maybe I need in the future, I have no idea. But what I could do now is I could say, uh, I could hide and unhide those things. I might do this in this video. So that's the groups of the right tower. Okay, now for the left side building, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'll go to a front. And I don't think there is an easy way to select that thing, is there? Okay, so basically I'll just deselect everything, select everything here, and now go inside and hold the shift, uh, the control button, sorry, and carefully select, oh, that's gonna be hard. Let's go to top, it's easier. Yeah, hit the control button and carefully select this, which deselects it. Did it deselect? I think it did. Once again, I'll click here, no, not new folder. I'll, uh, sorry, I'll uh, create a group out of the selection. There we go. Of course, it will have some generic names, so I have to modify them. I just hit the F12 or right click rename and say here, left building members and left building panels and left building nodes. Once again, taking those three things here and putting it into the folder. Okay, that's incorrect. I Hey, look, it automatically did that for me. Okay, fine, but at least I'll take it out and put it one level up and F2 this thing and say left building. I could change the color, but I don't want to. Okay, so now I will turn this off and turn this off and then say here, hide inactive. So I, in, I deactivated the left building I deactivated the right tower, and now I'm clicking hide deactive or inactivated, which will lead me to a simplified version of the structure where, ca where I can deal with the, with the bridge very simply. Okay, so now I think this is going to be a walk in the park. I'll select the reinforced concrete beams, select a 300 by 500, and just start drawing. So I'll just drag it, one click here, that's going to be an easy one. In case you are new to this channel or you are basically watching this for the first time, this is part of a video series in which we are dealing with the reinforced concrete building design. And uh, yeah, it's basically a part of those things. I will link the videos of the series in the top right. Also, 
I will be linking, if I do that, I'll select the secondary beam. I'll be linking the tutorial playlist on the top right too. So enjoy that. And why not give it a subscribe or maybe share it to your colleague. If you think that what I'm saying here is beneficial, you might share the knowledge because sharing the knowledge increases it. Okay, so now our last thing I have to do is to draw the plate here or the panel. I'll go to my shell. A rectangle, I think yes. It's a rectangle, I think it's a rectangle, but I'll go to contour anyway. I'll select thickness 200 and start drawing, so I'll just start clicking, making sure that my first line is aligning with the global x-axis, because I want my local x-axis of the panel to coincide with the global x-axis of the structure. Of course, if you want more details, there is a nice and juicy list about slabs that will be linking in the top right, take a look on there. You might find something beneficial. Okay, now I will basically select this. I will do it a little bit lazily. I think it's at 3.5 meters, so I'll just take that, say edit, edit, move, or copy. I'm doing it the lazy way. Edit, edit, move, or copy, because I think I'm warranted to have like a day off, I want to say, or a video off, because every time my videos are like a life and death situation, this time I think things are somehow less stressful. Okay, now you see again, I do not know why, and I have no idea to be honest, like is there an error? Edit, edit, move or copy. I, th I think I should report this to Autodesk. Whenever I edit, edit, move or copy, the gamma angles change. Look at this, those are now changed gamma angles. I have no idea why, to be honest. I think that's a bug that needs to be addressed by Autodesk. So I select those first of all, and go back to the Oh yeah, I need to go back to geometry, yes. And in the geometry here, in the gamma angle, where is it, where is it? There we go, click here, click here and say zero, and fix that. Now I have no idea why this is happening, I'm sorry. I think that's a bug in the structure. Okay, so yeah, I think, um, I think we've done what we came to do. Let me just quickly go to my groups and basically activate everything and show active. Ah, there we go. Okay, let me just activate everything and hide inactive. Okay, yeah. It hid it because it was not part of a group, but now I went back to the defaults. So, yeah, that's basically the structure in its full 3D glory. Now, uh, this might be a rather short video, I know, but let me tell you what, at least for the time being, let me tell you what I have for you in store. What I have for you in store is the column orientation. This comes at the later stage when I apply lateral loads. I have for you the behavior of expansion joints, how live load reduction works, if I can do it, axial versus bending stresses to determine the proper reduction factors, also something about stability, wind loads, and of course a staircase will come later, all those staircase things. I think our major modeling, our bigger picture modeling is completed, now it's time to dive deep into live load and so on. So from now on, each video will be tackling one little part of those things. For example, one video would be talking about live load and live load redistribution, if it's applicable and how to do with that, if it's even possible in a robot. One video is going to be talking about the wind load and how it compares itself between the wind tunnel simulation that robot has versus what the ESCE code has. Another video about earthquake loads and so on. So it's going to be a methodical, topical video. Alright, so that's everything I wanted to talk about today. And before I finish, I want to give a huge, fully modeled structure-sized shout-out to our dear channel members in the contributor level and the helper level, whose names are going to be shown on the screen. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as the support that the channel is priceless to me and enables me to provide you with the videos that I want to provide on time, hopefully, and with a certain quality that I try to achieve. And for that, I am forever thankful. Of course, now, if you have enjoyed the video and you found it beneficial, please consider providing a sacrifice to the YouTube algorithm by liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, especially subscribing, because it helps increase the reach of my channel. With that being said, and as per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.